Hello! Today's LEGO review will be slightly different and slightly new because I have a new style of LEGO reviews. Look at this beautiful new studio. So, today's LEGO set, it is huge! It is the biggest of the, of the summer 2018 wave. This is from the uh, realm of the Hunt Dragons and the Oni. And this is Dragon Pit set 70655. It is the biggest in this wave after the the Destino, the, the big vehicle. The one I don't have, I'm probably not going to get that one just because it's no longer in stores. It's probably really expensive. But nevertheless, look at the size of the set. The box is almost as big as me. Like, holy. This is one serious set. And there's a lot to cover here. And there's a lot of content in this set. So well, for ado, I'm not going to waste my time talking anymore. We better get started. So let's dive straight into the set. Okay. First thing I want to show you in this set. It does come with a brick separator because it's one of the really big sets. So here it is. It's just simple random orange. Nothing too special. Just your classic orange brick separator. And then now I want to show you just how big the instruction manual is. Because they just stuff these the, the entire set in this huge instruction manual. Normally you expect sets like this to break it off into one or two, three, or three books. But no, here they just put in one big giant book, which goes up to 200, if I can show you this here. 232 and how many steps is that 342 steps so this is a serious big set but um there is i know there's another really cool one um it's this one this set this is the diesel Nolt, and it's a really cool set but i can't get my hands on it because uh, it doesn't exist anymore and when it first came out, I did not buy it. So that's why I'm not going to spend a lot of money on Amazon to get this set again. But hey, the focus is not on that set. We're focusing on the biggest set of all, which is the Dragon Pit. So first and foremost, like all reviews, let's go over the figures. Obviously, uh, first and foremost, this is the figure that everyone has, wanting, has wanted this set for. This is the... The star, this is the, the the real deal, the main hero behind this whole film, or this whole series that's going to save the dragons. This is the Dragon Master, or in this case, it, this is Wu, young Sensei Wu, wearing his father, the first Spinjitsu Master's dragon armor. Full set completed, and man does he look gorgeous, like a perfect golden warrior. Because I've, if you have not seen my firstborn review, um, in that set, they have a bunch of pieces for his armor, so his helmet and his shield. And I said, whatever is golden, golden minifigures, golden Lego pieces, it's definitely got my attention. I absolutely love golden stuff. But look here, we get this full warrior, full completed minifigure. And I really, 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 really like it. And the back here, don't know what's up with this. This is his, I guess his Dragon Master cape or flag. And then you can see he has his shield. He has his sword, his Dragon Master sword. Very epic. We take that off. Here's what he looks like without his gear. And you can see, let's just let's take off his helmet first. And you'll notice it is Young Wu, his second face. His first face, his unsure face. Really like this guy a lot, and this is this is why you should get this set if you have the money. But overall, Dragon Master Wu looking awesome than ever. Right, moving on. Also on the good guy side, we have all four ninjas, surprisingly. So here is J, and you'll notice this is the same J. I did for a storm, storm ringer because I forgot to include the sword for that set review. 
So yeah, you you might recognize this guy, but I took the wrong figure for the review. So that was my mistake. But that this figure, the one I showed for the Stormbringer set, it's it goes and it goes in this set. It does not go with the other, that that other set. I also I think I also made the same mistake with Firstborn. But anyways, here is Jay. He just looks the same, honestly. There's no difference except that one has a sword. This one, this Jay does not have a sword. Instead, he has his chain nunchuck thing. And here's what he looks like in the back. Front. He, ah! He fell off. And, uh, to take that off, here's what he looks like without it. Alright, that's Jay. Now we have Cole. This is Cole with his hammer. And I've made the exact same mistake as I did with Firstborn, but he, there's no difference. He literally is the same Cole as Firstborn. And he has this gray hammer, print here, print on the back, and once you take off his helmet, his second face is here. And uh, overall, just a plain old simple Cole, and he is relatively very awesome. Now, let's take a look at Kai. Uh, the, this is the Kai that I accidentally swapped for Firstborn. So in the Firstborn review, this was supposed to be the Kai figure, but I accidentally grabbed this guy. So you can see, the only difference is that the Firstborn Kai, instead of having two katanas on his back, he has two mini daggers and he has the golden sword. Or not going to but the dragon sword. That's that, that's the only difference. And yeah, so not much, not much difference here. Once you take off the helmet or the, remember all ninjas have uh, their headgear comprises of two pieces. So it has the mouth guard and then it has the the head covering. And uh, yeah, that is Kai. Now we have Zane. We've gotten the Zane before. See, he has his bow and arrow with, a, with his quiv on the back. Here's the print from the front, and then here's the print from the back. And then once again, Zane's a robot, so here is no second face. There's no face, second face for Zane, apparently. All right, cool. So now let's look at the bad guys. Whoa, we got a bunch of the dragon hunters here. So this is heavy metal. We've gotten heavy metal before. And a bunch of other sets, but here she is again. If you haven't seen my other reviews, you'll know Heavy Metal is no ordinary dragon hunter. It is she's a girl, she's a woman, and she's secretly against against the dragon hunters and the work they do. She does not support it, but uh, she does not want to reveal the fact that she's a woman. So this is the the disguise that she took upon, and now she's one of the most most feared dragon hunters in Ninjago. So yeah, you can see she's heavily armored. She's equipped with a harpoon gun, which is to fish the dragons out of the sky and catch them as they're flying and she can reel them in. And you can see she's wearing this hat from the back. Very heavily armed and really cool figure. Now, what else have we got? Well, well, well. This is our good old, very long lame, muzzle, muzzle, muzzy. This is our glorious Chew Toy. And Chew Toy has his iconic shield thingy. I don't even know what that thing is. But on his other hand, he's wielding chicken, chicken drumsticks. I mean, who doesn't want to eat chicken even when you're hunting dragons? I respect him. But this thing is just so heavy that I have to lean him all the way back to keep him balanced or else he's going to topple for it like this. So, like... I've said this before, he's a really cool figure, it's just that his accessory is a little bit too much, hev too heavy for him, and it'll cause him to tumble over. You can see he's wearing a samurai helmet with half a horn, and yeah. So now we have Arcade. Not Arcade as in the place to play video games, but A-R-K-A-D-E, Arcade. So he's those guys who wears those, uh, those, um, what do they call them? The helmets when you're sawing stuff. So he's one of the, he's one of the, the maintenance dudes, one of the 
people who work on the hunters uh, vehicles to capture the dragons and I think this is the only way you can get him but anyways he's he's, he's pretty cool and he also has a wrench silver or gray wrench uh, and on the back here he has his chainsaw a little bit dangerous but you know what they're crazy people anyways here's the mask and I you can take this off and here's what he looks like under the mask he's also has no second face but you notice he's a uh, even he's bandaged up so can this guy talk I don't know can you talk cool figure though not gonna lie Never, nevertheless really cool figure dude definitely definitely get him all right so I definitely saved the best for last and Apart from the really awesome Dragon Master figure, you have the leader of the Dragon Hunters himself. This is Iron Baron. This is the guy, the main bad guy, the main antagonist in this particular season. In the flesh, or in this case, in the minifigure form. My god, has he come up with a grand entrance. So, he is a little bit piratey, and he has that little Abraham Lincoln vibe going on with that <laughs> with that really big hat of his, this thing, pretty awesome. And for the pirate vibe part, you can see he's peg-legged, so he has half a normal leg and then the other half is a peg, peg-legged, and you can see he has one normal arm, but the other arm, I think he lost it or something, it's supposed to be lost, but you can clearly see. You can detach this thing and it'll just be a normal arm again but in the lore it's supposed to be a lost arm this is his arm so it has i don't know what this is is this oh i think this is one of his personal uh dragon hookers so if they don't have a, a a hooker tool he can just fire this one from his arm to capture a dragon and i guess this thing here is like the meter to reel them in and here's his staff i think this is the staff that he uses to rule with. I like how they use this Atlantis piece back here. That's pretty creative and they have these little horns. Cool print on the front and a relatively cool little staff. And you'll notice Iron Baron has a little dagger on his on his little uh, shoulder pad. So I guess in case he needs to defend himself he'll just take that out and whip that out to fight. And uh, if in case you haven't seen it already here's the close look at his face and yeah so this is the leader of the dragon hunters and he cut he does come in the big diesel note the really big dragon hunter mobile set so it's, he's not rare but he is it's definitely a pleasure to get this guy in the biggest set especially since this is their HQ essentially but that is all for the figures all right Next up, before we get to the main temple, there's also one very important element included in this set, and that is this little, little dragon dude now. He is a relatively small dragon, but he was the one that the ninjas had to fight when they got thrown into that little uh, pit that Iron Baron's like, alright, you're gonna fight these dragons, and this, this was the one. It's a relatively small dragon, and you'll realize he's very bulky very bulky his wings are very tiny he's not those big giant flappy dragons that you know have big wings no he's one of these ground dragons I guess he's the perfect one for pit fighting because he's such he has such a bulk going on in him and already within the tail itself you can tell this guy is serious and he is one very bulky looking dude the tail is articulable, you can swing it in all sorts of directions, you can even fold this up, so it's very, very flexible. And as for the wings, the so-called wings, you can flap, you can open these up all the way actually. So these, in terms of posability, there's a lot of things you can do with this little guy. And for legs, ooh, legs, legs, legs. And on the back here, he has some very relatively tiny legs. And then on the front here, he has some big clawy legs. Very, His toes are very rocky, very, very stone going on. So the legs can be moved forward and back. 
can open all the way up. And the leg, the feet are fully articulable, and the and the, <laughs> the toes, though they fell off, they are very very articulable as well. Ah, oh, jeez. There you go. Okay. And uh, for the back, same thing here. You can move the toes, tails fully articulable, and so forth. So, what has made this dragon really, really well is that the color scheme on this dragon is actually very nice. I really like the use of olive green for the toes. I think that is one very smart move, very, uh, very uh, creative color scheme and olive green is always a welcome color in terms of Lego so good color scheme but uh, the head actually is all silver and gunmetal gray and has a little bit of has a little bit of uh, what do you call this color beige but interestingly enough of what they do with the head is that they have these they have these uh, swords I guess these are the cheeks of the dragon but these these are swords, and they can be folded open. I don't know if that made a difference, but yeah, that's it's unique. You can use swords, cheeks, and like all dragons now, all the heads are brick built, and I think that is a definite improvement because the the dragons we've gotten in previous years had molds, head molds, and they weren't really special. You can't really do much of them. But look at these brick-built dragons. You, the, the heads are completely brick-built and they look a lot better. Yes, the mouth can open and he has two uh, underbite teeth that go over like this. So, I don't know, pretty neat little guy. Pretty good little dragon. I think with this dozen top of here, you can ride him. And uh, yeah, cool dragon. Cool dragon overall. Really, really neat dragon and a cool addition to the set you know it's not just the temple there's also a little little thing you can also make on the side so that's the dragon now this is the HQ of the dragon hunters this is the main uh, the big deal where all the evil happens this is this is where they thrive and this temple is huge huge bigger than the castle of the Forsaken Emperor. It is one particularly big temple and we're gonna have quite some time going through the entire thing. So, without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's very uh, curvy. It like buckles in, Just that's because um, when you're playing with this set, you're supposed to pretend the you're supposed to pretend the area in front of here is actually the pit itself. And you're just essentially this is where your ninjas are fighting. So starting off down here, you'll first notice this is a little prison cell. So we're going to go from the uh, left side. So uh, this is a little prison cell to hold captured ninjas. And you'll notice this thing is detachable. So we're going to do exactly that. That way it will be much easier to show you the entire building by itself. So here's what it looks like and as you can see it's very 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 scary looking and uh, this is where the, the holes for to attach it to the main building itself and overall you can't really uh... okay so the way this prison works is supposed to drop your prisoner and then you release them into the pit to fight the dragon. So how does that work? Well, there is a knob at the back here and then from the top, just watch this whole play feature play out. So you just open up and then this opens, right? But then the floor opens, so that means your figure we just drop straight into here, cage will open, and then their figure is released into battle to fight the dragon. And I think this is a smart play feature. This does remind me of the Rancor Pit in Jabba the Hutt's palace, where he, you know he releases the, the floor underneath the person, drops them into the pit for the Rancor to devour. Got that really cool Rancor Pit vibe going on here. And uh, apart from 
the really smart function, the design is very, very, it's very junkyardish, but it's very like evil at the same time. You know, it's just a bone just sitting right here. Uh, you can fold these open if you want, and these will just help you uh, slip your minifigure inside. And I really like what they did, did here with the olive green Exoforce arms here, and the white spikes, and very top here they have this little uh, torch thing going on. Not quite sure. But yeah, overall this relatively cool prison design. Love it, love it a lot. So, uh, you can detach this back to the main temple by simply, there are three holes here. You just attach it to this part. And then you just snap it back. And it just all comes back together to one single piece. Now, moving on here is the main temple itself. And you'll notice there is one very big gate. Uh, before I show you what the gate does, just want to take some time to appreciate the detailing. The really nice detailing within these little, uh, like, in, in the gates. You got the spikes here, you got more spikes here, you got torches, you got even more spikes here. It makes this gate look very menacing and it's definitely a, it makes it look like an entrance to a place you definitely don't want to be visiting. So, relatively, I think the gate itself is what makes this place look very defining and very menacing. So you're moving up, uh, you can see the, in terms of architectural design, you can see they use these uh, curvy, curvy pieces here, just to give the more aesthetic feeling where the building is just dipping in as one. And then we're moving up here. This is the throne of Iron Baron. This is where Iron Baron will sit and cause his terror. You'll notice the throne is actually the skull of a dragon. Oh my, talk about it being a kid's show. This is, a little bit gruesome, but hey, apart from dark humor, that I really like the design of the skull. I think it's very nice. And inside, you'll notice there is an actual skeleton bone piece, torso piece, for Iron Baron to sit in. And it just looks like he's sitting right inside the mouth of a dead dragon. I think that's exactly what it's supposed to represent. Very menacing throne, and oh, what very menacing throne. Very neat design. You also notice there's like little uh, railings here, I guess. I don't know if these were intentional, but you can see more detailing going on here and very, very cool. Now we go on to this side, you see there's an engine here, right here. There is an engine. Well, what could that possibly be for? It's actually to help with the mechanism of the gates. I think this engine is actually what powers the gate. And you'll notice it is connected to a gear system here, to a knob. Now, what is this knob for, you may ask? Well, if you haven't figured it out by now, it is used for the gate. And you also notice it's a little, it's a little ladder here, just for your figures to climb up. So, I'm gonna turn this knob now, and I'm going to show you how the gate opens from the front, and then we're gonna turn to the back, and we're gonna see. So. My knob, my hand is on the knob, and it's right here. So once I turn it, the gate just opens like that beautifully. So I'm just gonna close it back up. Just show you the gate like this. Whoa, and then now, you can take your dragon, this little guy, I guess you have to fold him up a bit, just to tuck him in. And look how, just how perfectly he, fit, he fits inside, inside his little pit. So let's close, let's put him inside, and let's close up the gate. So now let's say, all right, the ninjas have been captured, and they've been released from this prison over here. And now they've been dropped into the pit to fight the dragon. And so how are you gonna mimic the dragon coming out? Uh, well, you turn the knob, gate opens, out comes your menacing, scary looking dragon. So, it's designed for this dragon, no doubt. You can't fit any other dragon inside that little pit. 
it's just it's just utterly impossible just just because of the terms of the surface area however you can't make your own custom dragons to that kind of size and just stuff them in there it all works out but now let's look at it from the back so now from the back you can actually see the gears but first what's with the fish why is there a fish there and why is there a drumstick specifically like ooh, what's up with that hmm interesting now you see this is just one solid tile you can sit your figures on or you can make this go into like another section of the room oh yeah there's a broom here by the way no no what's up with that either i guess well they gotta keep the dragon pits clean you know dragons are living beings so take poops from time to time but the cool thing about the back here is that you actually get to see the the gear function you can see all the gears turning so let's See this again and you just see how it opens in sync you can see the gears turning and you see it's like it has this little uh, axle attacher here and it has this as well so it's really cool seeing the gear from the back here it's, ah, it's pretty awesome I must say and I think if I'm not mistaken if I can't really sh like flip this moment to show you but there's an axle here that just links all the gears together for it to open. It's very, very nice. So, by the way, here's the prison from the back. Here's what, here's what it looks like attached to the back. There's not much to see, but yeah. All right, moving on. Oh yeah, by the way, if you want, you can always do this. You can always push open the gate by pressing these, by just using this instead of the gear. And this isn't the only side you can turn the knob. You also have this side, the same gear is on this side. So if you want actually, you can take both knobs, you can take both knobs and then you can just open up the gate at the same time. So that's very, very important for a set like this. So I haven't talked about the t detailing up here, haven't I? Well, look, there's exhaust thrust coming out. There's also like this little uh, channel piece here. Very cool, but I would just like the architectural design overall. Here's the back, by the way. Here's the back with, of, the, of the skull throne, and it's kind of plain, but yeah, you don't expect things to look nice from the back, do you? So this side, we got accessories, we got weapons. You can see we got another exhaust thrust here, but we also got a, I guess it's a scythe, and this is a sickle. And then if you go here, you'll see there's a fire extinguisher and a little barrel inside of a bone. Oh my, I don't know what that's for. But that leaves us to the last part of the main temple, which is the top. This is the top, this is the roof. Here's what looks like from the back. Really nice throne or a little horn thing here. But let's just rotate this all the way back to the front. F front, 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 Jesus. Mark 45, please talk well speak properly <laughs> but yeah here's the top and uh, as you can see they have some banners going on here and it's always neat when a set has banners and this in no doubt is one of the coolest ones too really like the center oriented piece here it looks very uh, menacing it's like it's a dragon yin and yang I don't know I can't tell you gotta tell me what it is people cool horns right here and the top of the roof just it just looks amazing. Just yeah, that's the time I'm gonna sum it up. I'm not, no, I'm not those in-depth reviewers, and I can't really say much. So that leaves us to the roof. You can lift these up, by the way, in case just so you can get more room to stick your hand into access to your figures. These pieces, who oh, I like what they did the corners. They did not leave the corners untouched. They had these little, these little uh, beams as well, just to add that extra depth of detailing so lego that is that is good keep up the good work continue doing something like this and your sets are going to come out awesome now the last part of this massive hq is the uh crossbow tower so so in this crossbow tower you notice the first thing i'm going to start from the top this guy what is this you may ask well this is a not a missile launcher but it is a thing so if a dragon flies by this fires and it's supposed to choke the dragon 
So how does this work? Well, okay, first and foremost, this thing can spin all the way 360. You can mount a figure here if you want, just to pilot this thing. But you notice how there's two Technic lift arms here and two knobs here. So this is supposed to fire the, the missile in sync. So you just simply lift the knob like this, and then you just release the missile like that. And the missile, it comes in the chain like this, just like that, and you're just supposed to use that to catch a dragon. And so, instead of the standard flick fire missiles, what Lego's done here is they have a dual flick fire function with a knob to fire the thing. So that is good play features, Lego, good play features. Moving on down here, you also notice there's a ton of bones here, but the detailing doesn't stop there in the, in the roof. Similar to the main temple itself, it just keeps going. It just keeps going with the awesome, awesome detailing. And just to show you what it looks like from the back, yes, there. in case you lose a missile, LEGO does include one extra missile here, just to attach here. Attached here, so if you like ever lose a piece, there's one here ready to be used. <laughs> See, LEGO is concerned about their kits too. Now you're moving down here, you can see inside now, here's kind of the middle, and you'll notice there is a one single beam in the middle here. You know what, I'm just gonna, yes, this thing can detach too, by the way. So you see, this thing has the studs too. So that out of the way, I can just literally show you inside. So here is the single beam here that's supposed to act as the pillar. And uh, yeah, I think honestly, need that little support you know because this one sturdy tower to you know power the the thing up here or the launcher but the secret is that i think this is what actually helps this thing rotate so from this side uh you can see there is more of that awesome looking fence with the prison gates this side as well and you also notice there is a telescope i guess this is for the hunters to scout out for dragons that might be flying by their area or to scout the ninjas, you never know, but to me, at first, I thought this looked like a sniper rifle, or a, yeah, but it, it, it's, it's a telescope. Yeah, it's a telescope. And then finally, down here we have more of these tile pieces, all stickers, by the way. And uh, in the front here, I guess this is, is this a, no, this is artwork. This is artwork of the dragons. Yeah. These are stickers, but these are really cool, and the color scheme with the beige sand stone color, that's that's awesome. And then finally, spike here, and we look at inside. Now, this is a blacksmith's area. It's not a kitchen, it's a blacksmith. Here's the table, the forge, the stuff. Furnace is back there with fire, so the furnace is active and it's boiling, or not boiling, it's, it's flaming hot. I guess these are the tools, so this is the hammer. You can lift this banner here. I mean, not banner, this is a hammer to hammer the stuff. And this is, I guess, a freshly made sword? I don't know. But these, I, I'm assuming these are just freshly made weapons from the blacksmiths. So here's a katana, and then here's like another of those swords. So cool little blacksmith's place. And uh, yeah, this is a cool little, little, little detail within these buildings. Now, remember, like I said, you can attach this back together. So to simply do that, you just take this, bring it here, or here. If you wanna move this further back, I think that's fine. But the instructions tell you to move it forward. But if you want, you can always move this slightly back. So we're just gonna do it the default way and just simply snap it back on. And that is the entire temple covered. So, what do I think of this set, personally, finally? Well, it's an awesome set. It's huge, has a lot of playability, provides a lot of content, and with the big sets, LEGO never fails to disappoint. But this is one big set. In terms of value, I think a figure just fell. But in terms of value, whoa. I don't know, man. You gotta have a lot of money to get this, this set. Just look at this, like I already showed you earlier, look at the sheer size of this box, like, this is a serious set. Also, my table is very, very unsteady, so my figures keep falling over. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for that. Can't reach those guys. But, yeah. 
I don't know. In this set, you get Dragon Master himself. You get this bulky little dragon guy. You get Iron Baron, the leader of the Dragon Hunters. And you get his massive castle. His massive empire with the super, super cool little gates. And so, 120 bucks. You decide if this is worth it. Me, personally, I think this is worth it. So I believe this is a good 9 out of 10. Or 9.5, actually. It's lacking one little thing. And I think that's mainly coming from the dragon. Uh, it's a little bit small. And it is... Yeah. It's, it's a little small. It could definitely lack... It lacks a little less and it could use a little more. But all in all... A uh, relatively good set, expensive set, so you tell me if this is worth buying, and if you got some cash, you should definitely pick up the set. So that's all I'm gonna say. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you like this new style of LEGO reviews, because I'm about to get started on our 3 year anniversary project, so there's more to come, so subscribe, smash that like button, or if you hate it, dislike it, it's your choice. But uh, I'm going to hit you with a yeet, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.